Champions League is back this week and tomorrow it's the quarter-final second leg between Real Madrid and Chelsea. Real Madrid 3-1 up and now hoping to see it out at the Bernabeu. Remember that Tuchel said it was over mm -hmm. after the game last week. I mean, it seems he's changed his mind all of a sudden. Uh, he's now saying we've got a real chance. Well, what a difference a one result will make. But but what a difference a big 6-0 victory <laughs> at the weekend will make. Don't dream it's over. Tuchel wants to play fantasy football. Just taking a look, I have a dream. Oh, it looks uh -oh. as though they are believing now, and it has been a change in the tune of Thomas Tuchel. What do you think about it all, Frank? Can Chelsea turn things around at the Santiago Bernabeu? Of course they, they, they can, because uh, the away goal doesn't count anymore, and I don't see why it's not possible for Chelsea to win 2-0 uh, and, and go to extra time. Uh, and uh, even win 3 0 against Real Madrid when I saw Barcelona being able to win 4, four 0 against, uh, against Real Madrid. So I find you pretty unfair with Mr. Tuchel. I, say, I think he said that, uh, <laughs> uh, that uh, Chelsea couldn't win said. if they played the same way. No, no, he said, he said that they couldn't win if they played the same way. I think uh, Jules and Ian could uh, confirm that. And, uh, and uh, I'm pretty sure that I have a dream. Uh, say is not coming from him. I think somebody very famous <laughs> said that before. But uh, yeah, me too. But uh, really, a little more famous than Tuchel. Yeah, but I really, yeah, <laughs> for sure. But I really, I really think it's possible. Yeah, I think even Real Madrid players they know that. I think they're gonna. Uh, I don't know how Ancelotti is gonna play. You know, if he's gonna play defensively. But they, they really know that the beginning of the game is gonna be crucial, and the beginning of the second half is gonna be crucial. If they concede a goal very quickly. They're going to feel in danger, and they're going to start uh, shaking, maybe, and uh, and be fragile. So uh, it, it's uh, it's uh, it's not done yet. Of course, they have a, a Real Madrid has a huge advantage, but it's not done yet. Uh, it has to be played. Yeah, obviously, with that big result at the weekend, Ian, and the fact that they eliminated them, Chelsea eliminated Real Madrid last season. They must have that belief they can do so. What are your thoughts on it all? Yeah, I think that they'll have the belief, but it would be a sensational result now. I think Real Madrid, 3-1 up, away from home. Um, Benzema terrorised the Chelsea defence. Chelsea didn't look themselves at all last week. They'd just come off that 4-1 home defeat against Brentford. I think that was still in their system somehow. They're a much, much better side than that. They've probably got their mojo back at the weekend. I can see this Chelsea making it a bit scary for Real Madrid, but I still think Real will get it done. All right, well, there's a big game I'd like to talk to you about elsewhere in the Champions League. Atleti against Manchester City. Manchester City taking a 1-0 lead into this one. Stefan Savic said 1-0 is not bad because when the team get here to the Wanda Metropolitano, things are going to be different. Meanwhile, Pep Guardiola has said we are going there to try and score and to try and win again. Now, you know both of these teams well, Ian. What are you expecting in this tie? <laughs> it's going to be a rare old atmosphere, isn't it, there? And, uh, you know, it's going to be a real fight, I think, for, for Manchester City. But maybe they've got Atletico where they want them because at some point, Atletico have got to come out to play to pull that tie around. I mean, Manchester City always score, don't they? And I think they're going to score in this game. I think they might go through with a little bit to spare, actually. Uh, and then you take a look, Jules, at what we saw in the last couple of games, that game against City from Atleti, that game against Mallorca at the weekend. Can they really have any hope that they can get a result here? I personally, I don't think so. I, I'm that that five five zero is still still give me nightmares at night. I wake up and I'm like, what? Really? You play nine five? You play five five zero? What? What's going on? With that squad, I mean, what's going on? <laughs> Come on. And at Mallorca at the weekend, they were terrible. Uh, even when they had the ball, even when they were trying to play, I, I just don't think they... I, and again, I don't think you can switch it on. It's not you go at the Etihad and you think, you know what, let's go back to our old self and you play the 5-5-0. And then next week, we're going to turn it on and we're going to play attacking football and we're going to attack a bit more. That's not going to happen. And Ian is right. As soon as they start to attack... City are going to say, come on now, here you come. And then they're going to hit them, and they're going to hit them hard. I just, Savage can say whatever he wants. It's different at the one that is this, is that. Really? Is it going to be different? City will have the ball, and I don't even know how Atleti can, can hurt them. Yeah, you can try on the counter, but Griezmann is not the player that he was five years ago on the counter. Joe Felix can't do it on his own. I mean, come on, the guy is really good lately, but even on his own, he can't, he can't do it. We saw that in the first leg. 
I, 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 want a, I want a good game. I want to enjoy the game and watch it and actually Atleti do something good and, and we have a bit of suspense and it's thrilling and all of that. But I'm really struggling thinking about the game, how that would be possible. So definitely not the highest of hopes, it seems, from the panel <laughs> in comebacks in those two games. But what about this one? It's Bayern against Villarreal. Villarreal with the 1-0 lead after the first leg. And uh, now this one goes back to Munich, back to the Allianz Arena. What are your thoughts on it, Jules? Well, I thought it was quite fascinating to listen to Julian Nagelsmann uh, today and Manuel Neuer in the press conference because they just destroyed Villarreal saying, oh, yeah, you, 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 know, you beat us, but now we're here in Munich and basically you have no chance and we're going to destroy you. Uh, I think it'd be tougher than that because I think Villarreal can also defend well and that 4-4-2 is tricky at times to play against because they're so compact and they don't give you much and they really fight for each other. And I think Unai Emery deserves a lot of credit for the tactical ability of this team and when they play, they play well, we saw that in the first leg, but also for their resilience at times, they can defend really well. But you would expect Bayern to now go and win it. They, the, the, the big regret really for Villarreal is to have only scored once in the first leg because they could easily have won 3 0. And the game would not be over, but it would be almost over. Now, with just the 1 0 advantage going to, to Munich, and you know that Bayern will try to do what they did to Salzburg when they struggled in that first leg and then just blist, blisted them in the second leg. And, and it could easily be like that. I think it would be tighter than the Salzburg second leg but you would expect Bayern to still go through. But let me get you on the record then, Chaka, for both of these games on Tuesday. Bayern against Villarreal. What's going to happen? Who's going to go through? I think Bayern are going to win 3-0. I, I, I do feel for Villarreal because I, I thought they were outstanding in the first leg. Should have won 3 or 4. But when you come up against teams like Bayern Munich, on and off day, you have to make it count. And though they got the win, it wasn't by anywhere near as, as wide as, as it should have been or they needed to be to, to overcome Bayern um, at, at, at the Allianz. And can Tuchel have a dream or should he dream on? No, I, listen, I, I totally <laughs> understand exactly what Tuchel is saying. I said it after the first leg when in, in the post-game press conference when he said this, we can't beat Real Madrid. I, I, I felt it was, a, it was a statement born out of frustration of seeing a decidedly poor Chelsea against Real Madrid and even worse Chelsea uh, against Brentford. And he, he, I, I said then that what I felt he was saying is this version that we've been over the last couple of weeks cannot get the better of Real Madrid at the Bernabeu. But what you saw at Southampton was a totally different, a totally different side. And now they're playing with pace, now they're playing with, with, with confidence. And as Frank said, you only have to score two. I think you go into that game thinking you can score, you can score two and get yourself back, back into this. An early goal changes all that. You can see it in an early goal and you, you've got it all to do. Let, let's also remember that Real Madrid have not been great lately themselves either. Probably their best 90 minutes of football was at Stamford Bridge. Even against PSG, they dominated for 30 minutes of the three hours of football. So you take all that into consideration and, and you have a chance. It's a, it's a big ask, but I think Chelsea and, and with a manager like Tuchel can do it. I still think that Real Madrid hold on. But if I'm sitting in that dressing room, I'm... Uh, I'm, I'm quietly confident. Well, what a game we hope it's going to be to look back on. It does sound as though he's actually trying to go for Chelsea there, doesn't it? We'll <laughs> definitely remind him of it. Thank you very much for watching ESPN FC on YouTube. For more highlights, analysis and exclusive content, be sure to subscribe.